Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out where your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at Gazelle dot com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to i5 for the iPhone, episode 88. And you know what that means. Happy palindrome, everyone. Seems like just yesterday we suffered through episode 77. How fast the time flies. This is the 10-minute program that covers the latest iPhone news, apps, tips, and tricks. We try to do as much as we can in the short time that we have together. I'm Sarah Lane, your guide to all things iOS. So let's just dive right in. Heads first. Number one, I'm going to start off with a revisit to an app that's saved my bacon once or twice, Hotel Tonight. Remember that? We've talked about it on the show before. The idea is that you might be in a city or some place and you need a, a, a bed to sleep in last minute. Or maybe your first accommodations fell through. Things happen. Hotel Tonight works with hotels because they don't want a pricey room to just go unbooked. And they're willing to offer deals in the 11th hour. The only thing wrong with this model is that most of us probably aren't really scrambling for last minute rooms that often. People plan ahead. But last week, Hotel Tonight added a feature called Look Ahead, which is exactly what it sounds like. Up to a week ahead of whenever the day is that you're looking at Hotel Tonight, the app will assure you if rates and rooms will be plentiful enough for you to stop worrying. If there's a conference coming to town or otherwise some sort of a bed shortage, at least you'd know and then you'd be able to plan accordingly. The team says that they're confident that this information is solid because they've tested the feature internally for some time. Sounds like kind of a fun place to work. Now, Look Ahead isn't available everywhere. For now, it's just in New York City, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Miami, Washington DC, Chicago, San Francisco, San Diego, and Dallas, but that's a pretty good start. Being spontaneous is fun, as long as you don't get screwed, right? So look ahead on Hotel Tonight and you win. Number two. Oh, hey, look everybody, another fitness tracking app. But this one's kind of cool, it's called Breeze. It's from the same people who make the very popular app RunKeeper. It's actually pretty awesome and requires no wearable technology at all, nothing besides your iPhone. So here's how it works. Once you install it, it can pull from the last seven days of your iPhone's motion activity history, basically steps you've taken. That's nice because right away you have a week's worth of data, so it just populates everything right away. And it's definitely accurate. For example, last Friday I went on a really long walk, but Saturday I wasn't really feeling very well and I barely left the house, so both of those are reflected and they seem about right. What's nice is that as long as your phone's with you, it's tracking you. Now, I almost always have my iPhone on me, but there are times that Breeze won't track me. For example, let's say I run on a treadmill a few times a week, I actually do do this, and then I put my phone on the console in front of me so I can see if I get a text. None of those miles are being counted because my phone isn't actually connected to me and I'm doing all this running. But maybe that's okay. More and more, we all hear about how, in addition to regular exercise, as long as we humans keep active throughout the day, we're gonna stay healthy, right? We got standing desks. We're supposed to take frequent breaks, that sort of thing. So even if Breeze is just tracking your everyday stuff, you can still work towards goals, and then dedicated exercise could just be a bonus on top of that. By the way, Breeze most closely reminds me of an app called Moves, which we showed off on i5 last year, but I like the design of Breeze better, so this is my pick going forward. And it's free. Number three, we got an email from Andy in Connecticut who has what he calls a da tip squared, an uber da tip. Andy writes, you know when you want to know what time it is, you use your phone to check the time, right? If you're playing something like audio or video and you're on the lock screen, it'll display a graphic of what you're listening to instead of the standard lock screen. The time is right there at the top of the lock screen, but what about the date? Have no fear, click the home button again, and the lock screen displays a larger clock with the day and date right below. I know everybody knew this but me. Well, Andy, I didn't know this tip either, so maybe you and I are the two least cool people left on this earth, but somehow 
I bet there's more of us. Thanks for writing. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle. Are you thinking of getting a new iPad or iPhone or you've just got a big junk drawer full of gadgets that you should be getting rid of? Gazelle wants to buy that stuff from you. In fact, Gazelle wants you to lock in your price today so that when you send your gadgets to Gazelle, you already know what you're getting back because Gazelle's offer is good for 30 days. Here's what you do. Go to gazelle.com, that's G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com, and find your item. Tell Gazelle the condition your item's in. Be honest, they'll buy all sorts of broken iPhones, even if that's what you've got. Then you get that risk-free offer for your gadgets, plus free shipping, they'll throw in that too. When it's time to get paid, you'll get paid fast by check, PayPal, or for an extra 5% with an Amazon gift card. So go to gazelle.com right now and get that offer. Gazelle's trustworthy. They've paid out more than $100 million to over 700,000 customers. It's easy, you got that free shipping, the process is fast, no listing hassles. Just get rid of that stuff and get some money for what you actually want. You can sell your iPhone 5, Apple iPad 4th Gen, Apple iPad Mini, Samsung Galaxy S3, yeah, they'll take those too. What's your iPhone worth? Take a minute and go to gazelle.com to find out. Do it now though, because your iPhone loses value the longer you wait. And thanks so much to Gazelle for sponsoring this episode of i5. Number four. Okay, time for our quarterly check-in on the Flickr app. We seem to do this a few times a year. Flickr was once the place for photographers or even just amateur photographers like me to upload and share their photos with friends, but they really missed the mobile boat, as in, you know, smartphones started getting all these other apps and Flickr was just not really that necessary and it kind of got left behind. What's nice is that Yahoo CEO Marissa Meyer is really trying to catch back up. Yahoo, of course, owns Flickr. And the latest Flickr app is really nice and totally rebuilt from the ground up. So here's what's new in version 3.0. Photo capture screen, self-explanatory. Easy to take a photo. You can add a filter and live filters are supported so you can choose that filter before you even snap the image. Then editing tools after the fact make photos look really nice. Basically, if you never used another photo editing app, Flickr would be just fine. But you can also capture video, HD video, and send it to Facebook, Twitter, or Tumblr. You can also use Flickr, not unlike you'd use Instagram. You follow a bunch of friends, and then your stream is full of their recent pictures. But unlike Instagram, which is pretty feature light on purpose, Flickr is very robust. Every photo you upload can be public or private. You can organize all your photos into albums and collections, tag all your stuff, the works. Then you get a thousand gigabytes of free storage right off the bat from Flickr. So it's a very good motivator to just take pictures. Now, I don't use the next feature because I already do it through Dropbox, but Flickr also allows you to automatically upload every photo that you take all of which will be private until you make them public. I take a ton of garbage photos, so I'm not really sure it's the best use of Flickr for me to go through all of that junk rather than just delete it from my phone. But auto upload is all the rage these days, so good on Flickr for providing that service too. Flickr app, I think you're awesome, and maybe some of my Flickr nostalgia keeps me from ever really moving on, but I want you to succeed. Finally, number five. In honor of baseball season and those of us who like watching baseball on TV, Google announced last week on its Chrome blog that Major League Baseball is adding support for Google's $35 Chromecast streaming stick through the MLB at Bat app for iOS and for Android, but you know, for these purposes, we're just talking about the iPhone app. So, if you have an MLB.TV premium subscription, it has to be premium, now you can stream live and on-demand video from the app to a Chromecast connected TV. Now, of course, this is Chromecast. If you know how Chromecast works, you can also stream from a browser tab in Chrome through MLB's site. That's why people love Chromecast so much. It's just easy to use. What's nice about the app, though, is that you can also use your iPhone as a second screen experience to check scores and stats and read news because you're watching the game on the bigger screen and you've got your iPhone back. Now, I really should stress that the MLB.TV premium subscription is not cheap. It's $129.99 per year or $24.99 per month, but it's also every 2014 regular season out-of-market game live or on demand in HD. If you like baseball, you might like that. Apple TV has its own MLB app as well, but I know not all of you who have iPhones also have Apple TVs, and if you're a Chromecast user, this is just another nice perk. 
I'm so sorry to have to tell you this, but another i5 episode has come to its fiery end. But don't worry, all of our show notes live forever at twit.tv slash i5. App links, subscribe links, everything's there. You can also email us at i5 at twit.tv. Let us know how we're doing or leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5 or send us a video. I don't care how you do it, I just want your feedback. I'm Sarah Lane, this is i5 for the iPhone and we'll see you right here next week. Ta-ta.